Hello everyone and welcome to the chapter number 19 of Blender Master Course Materials, Textures and Nodes using the object shape to place material or in simpler words using vertex paint and if you are new to this course then do check out the previous 19 chapters from the link of the playlist in the pinned comment. So to understand about the working of vertex paint let's first delete this cube by pressing X and we'll add a Suzanne or the monkey model in our scene. So let's select the monkey model. Now here we have the Suzanne or the monkey model but right now if we go to the edit mode then we can see that the number of vertices of the Suzanne and model are very less. For this we'll add a modifier by going to the object mode then to the modifier properties and we'll add the subdivision surface modifier. Click on add modifier, go to generate and select the subdivision surface. Let's increase the levels viewport to 3 and now it looks very smooth. Also if I apply this modifier by clicking on this drop down menu and apply and now if I go to the edit mode you can see that the Suzanne model now has a high number of vertices. So let's go back to the object mode now and to use the vertex paint you have to go to the vertex paint mode. For this you have to click here where it's written object mode and then select the vertex paint. Now before understanding how to use this vertex paint, there's one more important thing to show you. So I'll go to the object data properties by clicking on this green icon here and here you have an option of the color attributes. So if I click on it, you have something here which is named as attribute and all the data that you change in this vertex paint mode is saved here in the attribute. Now coming back to the vertex paint, let's first see how we can use this vertex paint to add some smudge or some dirt to our object. For this, I'll go to this paint option here and here you have an option of the dirty vertex colors. So if I select it and now you will notice that your object has become a little dark or basically some dirt has been added to it. But you can see here that this monkey has dirt only on some faces and suppose you require the dirt or this darkness on the complete monkey or the Suzanne model. So for this you have to go to this drop down menu of dirty vertex colors and here you have an option of normalize. So if I uncheck this you will notice that now this dirt or the darkness is spread all over the monkey head. But if I go back to the object mode we can't see the smudge or the dirt effect on it. In fact even if I go to the render view and we need to add some lights in our scene. So I'll select this light here and create a duplicate of it by pressing shift plus D and let's move it in the y direction and let's also move it in the x direction like this. And now you can see here that it does not show the changes that we did in the vertex paint and that's because we have not assigned any particular material to it. To give it a new material we have to add a shader editor here. So I'll take my cursor over here, right click and select horizontal split. Let's divide the area into two parts and left click. Now to change this into the shader editor, I'll click on this icon here and select the shader editor. Now to give a new material to it, I'll select this and click on new and here you have the default material assigned to this Suzanne or the monkey model. But as I already told you, all the changes that we did in the vertex paint mode are saved here in the attribute and so we need to connect this material of the Suzanne or the monkey model to this attribute to see the changes here. And to do this, you have to go to the shader editor, press shift plus A and in the input, you have this attribute. So I'll select this and let's place it here. And now before connecting them together, we first need to change the render engine. By default it is set to EV but we'll go to the render properties here and change it to cycles. And now to connect them together, I'll take this factor socket and connect it to the base color. And here you see that it has completely turned to black color. That's because we have to assign the specific attribute that we had in this object data properties to this attribute node. To do this you have to go to this name option here and type attribute and press enter. And here you can see that you have your Suzanne or the monkey model with the smudge or the dirt effect added to it. But in most of the cases you will be using this vertex paint to change the color or paint some specific part of your object. For example, if I change the object mode to the vertex paint and now suppose I want to paint the color of these eyes. So for this, I'll first go to the solid view here and right now you can see that it's showing the dirt added to it whose data we have stored in this attribute. And to remove this, I have to click on this minus icon here and here we have our default Suzanne model. So to paint these eyes, I need to add a new color attribute here. So I'll click on the plus icon here and here we have the option to change its name. So I'll change its name to eyes and this color would define the color of your Suzanne model. So I'll change it to white color by clicking on it and increasing the brightness with the help of this brightness slider and then I'll click on OK. Now to set the color that we want, you have to click on this white color here and let's change it to red color. And now I can zoom in and if I left click and drag my cursor like this, then you can see that the eyes of this monkey model are being colored red. Similarly, I'll go to the other eye, click left mouse button and drag it like this and the color of this eye will also change. So now our monkey model looks like this. Let's also change the color of this nose to red color. So I left click here and drag it like this and now this is our Suzanne or the monkey model. And now if I go to the render view, you can see that our model is completely black. That's because in the shader editor, we still have that 
old attribute connected with the principal BSTF. But since we have deleted it, so it has turned to black color. So to change the name, I'll click here and type eyes. And remember that it is case sensitive, which means that you have to take care of the capital and the small letters. So now I'll press enter. But here you can see that the eyes are not red colored. They are colored separately, but still they are not red colored like we painted in the vertex paint. To fix this, go to the shade editor, press shift plus A and we'll add a mix color node. So I'll go to color and select the mix color. Let's place it here. And now I have to connect this attribute to the mix color. But before that, I need to break this node connection. So I'll hold the control key, click right mouse button and drag it like this. Now I'll take this color socket and connect it to the color B. Then I'll take this result socket and connect it to the base color. And now you can see that the red color of the eyes and the nose have appeared on this Suzanne or the monkey model and you can even change the color of the remaining monkey model with the help of this color A. So if I select this and change it to light blue colored then you can see here that the part of the model except for the one which we painted is now light blue colored. So you can use the vertex paint option whenever you want to paint color on the surface of your object and one more important thing to remember is that while using the vertex paint you are not changing the color of these vertices. In fact you are applying a mask on it. To understand it you can see this image where the selected object has the same default color or the material but we have added this colored mask over it with the help of vertex paint and now let's also try it with some other part of this object let's say the head of this monkey model so i'll go to the solid view again and i'll add a new color attribute for it so i'll press on this plus icon and i'll change the name to head and the color is set to white color so i'll click on ok so the color of the eyes is stored in the eyes color attribute and now whatever new changes that we'll make will get stored in this head attribute so i've selected the head attribute now and I'll change the color from here. Let's change it to green color. Let's adjust the view properly and now if I left click and drag my cursor like this then the green color is being applied over the head of the monkey model. So the eyes attribute here has the data of the red colored eyes and nose and the head attribute has the data of this green colored head. Now if I go to the render view again and let's change this to object mode we can see that the green color of the head has not appeared here and that's because we have not added the head attribute in the shader editor. For this, I'll select this attribute and create a duplicate of it by pressing shift plus D and let's place it here. Now I'll change the name by clicking on the name option and I'll type head and press enter to confirm. And to connect this to the remaining node system, I need to create a duplicate of this mix color also. So I'll select this and we'll create a duplicate of it by pressing shift plus D. Let's place it here and we need to adjust it. So I'll take these two and left click to move them, take this mix color and let's place it here. Now to connect this head attribute to the remaining node system, I'll take this color socket and connect it to the color B of this mix color. Now to get the data of both the eyes and the head, I'll take this result socket and connect it to the color A of the mix color. Now I'll break the connection between the older mix color and the principal BSTF by holding the control key, clicking right mouse button and dragging like this. Now I'll take this result socket and connect it to the base color. And here you can see that the data of both the attributes is now applied on the Suzanne model. And suppose you want to change the strength of these colors. For this, you can increase the value of this factor here. This one will help you to control the strength of this green color and this one will help you to control the strength of this red color. So if I increase the factor from here, you will see that the red color has increased and if I change it to its default value and go to the other one and if I increase its factor value, you will see that the strength of the green color has increased. But right now, I'll be setting them to the default value of 0.5. So this was all in the vertex paint. Even though you will be using this vertex paint option in very rare situations like modeling some character or painting something specific on a particular object, but still it was important to understand it. And this brings us to the end of this chapter and our next chapter is gonna be the chapter number 20 object info node so don't forget to subscribe to our channel press that notification bell so that you can get timely updates about the upcoming chapters thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one